Hi, I'm Chris Nuttall, Chief Operating Officer of NCAB Group. Every day we get questions regarding how circuit boards are produced. Today we're going to talk about how much finished copper can be expected. This might sound like a simple question, but we have seen the way in which copper thicknesses are called out either on the drawing or the specification can lead to additional engineering questions and in some cases additional cost. These are unintentional results as a misunderstanding of what is requested. Not in all cases, but some. So let's start with some terminology. Ounces. This relates to the weight of copper in ounces that covers one square foot. As the air itself cannot change, it's fixed. As the weight of copper increases, so does the thickness of the deposit of copper. So what does half ounce, one ounce, or two ounce really mean? There is a perception that half ounce equals 70 microns, that one ounce equals 35 microns, or two ounce will give you 70 microns. And whilst that's pretty close, it's not strictly true. And this brings us to IPC, specifically IPC 6012, which is the qualification and performance standard for rigid printed boards. Also, table 313, which relates to the internal layer foil thicknesses. Still here, you might want to go and get a coffee for the next bit, it gets rather technical. So if we consider one ounce, we can see that this actually equates to 34.3 microns or 1.35 mil as the target for the foil manufacturer. However, this also allows for a 10% tolerance on the produced foils, which means that a one ounce in a layer foil could be received at the PCB factory with a thickness of 30.9 microns or 1.217 mil. From there, we also see that there is a 6 micron or 0.24 mil reduction allowed for the pretreatment of the copper foil during the process at the PCB factory, prior to imaging and also prior to bonding. So the minimum copper foil thickness after processing for a one ounce of copper foil may be 24.9 microns or 0.96 mil, which is a little bit different than the 35 microns perceived. Where we see the potential challenges is when we see the thickness for inner layers specified as 35 microns minimum. This means that in order to achieve this 35 microns or 1.38 mils as the foil thickness after processing, we would need to start with two ounce, which would provide 55.7 microns or 2.2 mil. Looking at external or outer layers becomes a little bit more complex as the industry standard IPC 6012 relates to base copper weights rather than finished copper. Table 314 shows us that the minimum surface conductor thickness, or the finished copper, is equal to the absolute minimum copper foil thickness plus an average copper plating thickness of 20 microns or 0.8 mil for class two and 25 microns or one mil for class three minus the maximum processing reduction allowance. So let's see what happens when a customer calls for one ounce finished. We know that IPC minimum one ounce copper weights equates to 30.9 microns or 1.217 mil. So if we start with half ounce, 15.4 microns or 0.6 mil, plus plating of 20 microns for class two or 25 microns for class three, and then allow for process reduction of two microns we can see that we will finish with 33.4 microns or 1.3 mil for class two and 38.4 microns or 1.5 mil for class three. This is pretty clear. And again, close to the one ounce equals 35 microns perception. But this is a different story as copper weights increase. If we look at the two ounce equals 70 microns, this is based on the perception that we have 35 microns to start plus an additional 35 microns 
our one ounce base plating. So if we start with one ounce, 30.9 microns or 1.2 mil, plus plating, again, 20 microns for class two, 25 microns for class three, then allow for processing reductions of three microns. We will finish with 47.9 microns or 1.9 mil for class two and 52.9 microns or 2.1 mil for class three. So when we see drawings that call for a specific thickness such as 70 microns or 70 microns minimum, we have to start with two ounce base copper foil and plate up to achieve a finished thickness of 78.7 microns or 3.1 mil for class two products or 83.7 microns or 3.31 mil for class three products. This has a notable impact on costs as there is a difference when quoting with one ounce base or two ounce base. And this is why you may see questions from NCAB as we seek to clarify what copper thickness do you need and what base copper thickness should we be starting with. If you would like to know more about this subject, please don't hesitate to contact us at NCAB Group.